As you can see, I have just been in progress of filling out my electoral map, my final prediction for for president, okay, in 2020. Now, there's a talk about firewalls, all sorts of things, so we're going to get on it real quick. Let's just fill in all the states that are going to definitely go for Sleepy Joe and all the states that are going to go for Donald Trump or as the Floridian Cubans would say, Donald Trump, and we're going to do great. Um, these states are just going to be secure in the bag. Do not worry about any of these red or blue. Um, now let's move on. The next state that we're going to fill in is Colorado. Colorado, I believe, will go red by approximately... And you know what? We'll start with the swing -a meter first, okay? As you can see, if we have the 2016 election, exactly the same. But change the demographics. Donald Trump is in a 2 million vote deficit like normal in terms of the last election. And he's losing the states of Florida, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin. And it's not looking pretty. So, again, you have to lower immigration. But first, we let's win this election, okay? Um, first of all, let's go in ahead and see. So, so far in the early voting, Trump is killing it with the blacks. Um, he's getting 15%, 12%, 13%, 20%. I'll just give him 13 for the sake of argument. So instead of 8%, he's going to get 13 which already he's winning Michigan off of that. Florida, North Carolina. We have black turnout being lower this time. Um, I don't remember what the number is, but it's going to go down a couple percent. So let's lower, lower it to 53 or 54. Let's play a conservative. All right. Um, already we're winning Pennsylvania, as you can see, very narrowly. Hispanics have been going more Republican. I estimate them to be at 34 this year. Um, okay, so there you go. 35, 34. It's very hard to get the specifics here, but let's... I'm trying to be dramatic, but it's not working. Also, Asian vote is trending slightly Republican. Let's make it 30%. So as of right now, Trump's winning 306 electoral votes, as you can see. Um... So, I mean, things are not looking beautiful for Donald Trump exactly, and I'm not touching the white vote. God knows what's going to happen there. But let's say that it does trend a little educated white against Trump. Instead of 54 for Democrats, let's say it's 55 this time. But also to compensate, let's say that the white non-college goes up ever so slightly by 1%. And this lumps at the difference, okay? Um, more or less, this is what's going on. The election's looking very similar to what it was before, okay? And frankly, frankly, this looks about right. So let's move on. So right now, Colorado is probably going to be likely blue. I estimate it would be blue by six. And this is not because of Latinos, but more so white liberals. So there you go. New Mexico is going to be likely blue as well. Gary Johnson's vote will go down. Obviously, the vote share for the Libertarian is going to be way down. But at the same time, Donald was not winning it anyway. Sorry. So I think he'll lose by upwards of three, probably more like five, maybe six. So that's not good, but whatever. We move on to another state such as Texas. Texas will 100% not flip this time. You can argue about 2032 and forward because of immigration. Yeah, fine, Vincent James, but... This year, Texas is not going to flip. If Texas flips, we're 100% going to lose the election. I'm calling it there, but but I won't. Now, Red Eagle loves to talk about, you know, the suburbs and all this. He's dooming a little bit. He's saying, oh, it'll be red by four. I doubt it, honestly. I think it'll be more like six. Sure, Trump won by eight or nine, but he will lose ground in the suburbs in multiple areas to the point where I do think that he's going to lose some face here, and that's unfortunate, but it's still going to be likely, okay? Not lean, but likely. And plus, hundreds of thousands of votes will probably be from illegals, fraudulent votes, void, mail-in ballots, stuff like that. So who knows? You can see Trump winning by like five, but really five and a half or six if you get rid of all the fake votes from the Democrats and the Mexicans and so forth in the Rio Grande Valley. Um, and I, I would know. Uh, let's move on to Iowa. Iowa is going to go likely Trump, if not safe. Trump got 9% in Iowa last time. I think we'll probably get 7 or 8. The Des Moines Register has them at, at 7. And again, I'm citing only the good polls, which includes uh, Big Data by Richard Barris, the People's Pundit. We have 
Democracy Institute is pretty good. We have Trafalgar, the gold standard of the bus belt. And we have intuition, registration, all that. Um, according to the swing matic Biden's winning by 4.6 in Virginia. That seems a little off. And again, different states trend to different rates, which is not appropriated in this map. So let's go to likely. Um, Red Eagle likes to say it's safe. I don't think so. It voted less than 5% for Clinton, if I remember right. He lost it by 4.6 or something. And let's also keep in mind that um, that Kane was from Virginia, the vice president for Hillary, so that helped a little bit. So because of that, I do think that Virginia is going to be anywhere from 5 to 7 points blue, which makes it likely blue, nowhere near 10. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but not like it matters. Uh, let's move on to the next state of Georgia. Georgia is going to go probably lean Trump, and I'll tell you why lean Trump. It's probably because it was 5-ish percent for Trump in 2016, but the problem is the suburbs, the white suburbs, are trending a little bit to the left. But that's not enough to flip the election, number one. And then number two, the the blacks are going to vote more for Trump this time anyway, and they're going to turn out less for Biden than they did for Obama or Clinton, etc. So it's going to go probably... Worst case, three for Trump, probably four for Trump, but we'll see. Um, we move on to another state, such as Ohio. Ohio is estimated to be in the swing meter up Trump by about nine. I doubt that's going to happen, and if he does, he will win the election, by the way. But he did win by 8% last time, and I think that's pretty accurate. Um, I would say he might have lost a little bit of ground in the suburbs, but the white working class will turn out more than last time. So let's say Trump wins it by six or seven. That's likely. Also, you can see more analysis in my Trafalgar video, which was the last one. Anyway, um, let's move on to Minnesota. Hold on, hold on. Let's put the brakes here. First of all, Maine at large needs to be shut up already. Tilt, D, whatever. Lean, I'll be lean, whatever. Who cares? Um, the first district's going to Blumph. No, sorry. The second one's going to Blumph. And then the second, or the first, well, I feel like Joe Biden, sorry. But, yeah, the the one on the coast is going to go for Biden, okay? So that's one. And then let's move on to Nevada. Nevada is going to be an important state, said nobody ever. I think voter fraud alone will make Trump lose in a tilt election anyway. So it's a foregone conclusion that Biden will probably win the state of Nevada, disregarding whatever other people will say about early voting, because I'm not a nerd enough to find that out. Um, so that's going to be a lean Biden state. And then we move on to another state such as North Carolina, where we have a depressed black turnout, as well as the blacks voting more for Trump than last time, as well as you have the white people not moving too far away from Donald. And again, you have the suburbs not going too far away from Donald Trump either. So I think he'll win it lean. I think he'll win the state from anywhere from two to four. I think it's more in the three range, but we'll see what happens. Um, we move on to the state of New Hampshire. New Hampshire um, was very, very close in the year 2016. Kelly Ayotte and or Ayotte and Trump got really close. I think within one percent in 2016. In fact, I think Trump got within a couple thousand votes in New Hampshire. But the main problem I do see with New Hampshire is that it's too there's too many white college liberals to really flip the state number one and then number two. We do have a couple things that are good news for Donald Trump. The good news would be that Donald Trump is, in particular, going to have a boost from the college kids not being able to register to vote as much. Therefore, that will suppress turnout by like several hundred kids, if not a couple thousand. And then the other thing is that Governor Sununu may or may not help Trump because he's very popular. But at the same time, if you remember... Governor Sununu, because he's a selfish prick sometimes, um, counter-signaled Donald Trump about the China virus, saying that what he said was reckless, something about the mask or something. I don't know. But anyways, um, Chris Sununu is a cuck anyway on a lot of issues, so we're going to have it be lean for Biden. Is that lean or is that tilt? Okay. Safe, likely lean. Okay, that's what it is. I, I'd say Biden wins by two, one point something, something like that. Um, Red Eagle told me as much, and I honestly don't know. The, the polling in New Hampshire sucks donkey poop, and I just can't tell you either way. So that's that's going to be a lean Biden state. 
Um, let's move on to another state such as Minnesota or actually Florida. Florida is predicted in the swing meter to be voting 2.9% for Trump, and that seems about right. Um, Hispanics are really coming out for Donald, and that's a great thing. And the rally he had in Miami with 50,000 people was awesome. Um, you have a unified Republican Party for sure. You have people that, you know, even in a midterm in 2018, Rick Scott beat Bill, Bill Nelson. He still beat uh, Ron DeSantis beat. What's his face? Ron DeSantis beat the black guy, Andrew Gillum, the, the gay crack addict or whatever he is. He beat him in a wave year for Democrats, meaning that Florida's looking pretty good for the Republican Party. It was estimated that the Democrats needed a six to 800,000 early vote lead to be able to win the state, but apparently that lead is only down to less than 200,000 from last time I checked. So all signs are showing to a Trump win. Now the margin is questionable. Um, again, the swiggle meter has it 2.9% for by Trump. Um, I would have it 2 to 3, honestly, in the 2 to 3.5 range. So that's definitely a lean for Trump. I would say he'd probably win it by 2, 2 to 3, something like that. So that's a good thing. We have the next state of Arizona. Arizona is a big deal, of course. The most important state, debatably, and we have Trump winning by 4.5, according to this poll, I mean, to this Cook political report. And I do think that because he's doing better with Hispanics, the Mormons, a more unified GOP, the Trump turnout, the enthusiasm in Arizona is through the roof. The base is super excited. Everything's going well so far in Arizona in terms of Trump and the Trump campaign. My main problem would be maybe the suburbs, but the, sub the suburbs are not flipping enough for Biden, and the turnout is gay and abysmal. So I would say that Trump wins it by about three, two to three, three to four, somewhere around those lines, which is a lean to me. Also, let's make sure that Nebraska is confirmed as a, at a, as a Republican tilt status area because that's what it is. The congressional candidate there is Don Bacon. He's doing okay in the race against a Bernie bro, progressive, so-called progressive Marxist uh, Democrat opponent in the Congress there, as well as that should be able to help Trump in terms of coattail effects. So right now, this is the 260 firewall. I give this firewall a 90% chance of happening. I'm very confident. Of course, Texas staying red, Ohio staying red, Iowa staying red the second district in nebraska the at-large district at um the second district in maine florida georgia north carolina arizona etc okay now let's move on to the big four. First of all i think joe biden unfortunately will win the state of minnesota in a tilt fashion now it has it at a break even lean for biden but my problem with that is that if you were to look at Duluth, Duluth is apparently going to flip that area. That Iron Range is going to flip for Trump. That's going to get net him th several thousand votes. He only lost by 50,000 last time. Um, the suburbs may trend towards a Biden because suburbs are trending towards the Democrats now. But the problem is that the rurals are going to trend a little bit more for Donald, I believe, a little bit, as well as the riots, the severe riots in that area in those democratic cities and then by proxy those suburbs are going to make the suburbs think twice and the law and order issue is very popular for donald trump meaning that it'll probably stop the bleeding in terms of the suburbs so it's really if the democrats are not getting any momentum among the fifty thousand that trump needs to flip and trump's chipping in on the iron range and he's chipping in on maybe a little bit of the right suburb suburban people that are flipping now and if Kanye does steal some votes from black votes from Biden, that'd be a good thing. And then if you add in that the McMuffin vote was 1.5%, I believe, or something like that, then I would say that Trump could, in the very best case, win tilt in Minnesota. But we'll have to see. As of right now, I have a tilt Biden, unfortunately. Um, we'll, we'll move on to the next state of Wisconsin. Wisconsin is very important in this election. He's up by 1.2 according to to the swing meter the way that I have it set up, and frankly, I think that if you look at the Wow counties, the Wow counties are looking okay to good for Donald Trump. Richard Barris seems to be 
do, saying that Trump is doing okay in terms of the late breakers. He's winning the late breakers, the undecideds, whatever. He's the incumbent. Remember that. Also, keep in mind that the suburbs could only trend so far. Scott Walker almost won, even in 2018 in a blue wave. So that goes to show that Trump probably has a chance of making it tilt red, and that's probably the case. Um, in terms of Michigan, Michigan is another important state. Michigan, as of right now, as you can see, with the 260 firewall in Wisconsin, Trump wins. Um, Michigan is very important. Um, according to the to the swingometer, he is winning by 1.9% in Michigan, which makes somewhat sense. A lot of black pillars will say wrong. A lot of people, including RCP, those gay aggregates will have him, you know, Biden up by five, six, or seven. And that's fake news. That's not going to happen. I can promise you that. In terms of the early votes, it's obvious, you know, in layman's terms, Trump is definitely going to make it close if he loses anyway. But as of right now, I do have a tilting Trump. And the Trafalgar poll does have Trump up by two and a half at times, which would make it a lean. But I'm not going to look stupid, so I think it's going to be tilt, right? Um, yeah, because if you were to look at certain places, the Upper Peninsula is strong for Trump. The rallies are good for Trump. He's rallying plenty there, and John James may or may not help him. I don't know. So, I mean, so far, so smooth in Michigan. There's no particular reason why Biden would win it over Trump, and Trump was the one that won it last, therefore. And also, undecided slate breakers, again, leaners, are going for Trump, which means that over time, the trend will bend towards an arc towards Trump winning. So, that's a tilt Trump state in my gut. Um, Pennsylvania, the most important state, this could le this could decide the election. Richard Barris in particular thinks it's the most important state. He says that if he doesn't win Pennsylvania, he'll, it'll be virtually impossible for Trump to win. And in my opinion, that's kind of true. So out of those 20 electoral votes, we see that Trump's winning by 1.1% in Pennsylvania, according to the swing meter And I think that's kind of right, honestly. And um, But also Robert Barnes important guy, um, said that Philadelphia will produce up to 100,000 fake votes, you know, you know, bogus, bogus Floyd mail-in votes. It's hard to articulate it in a concise fashion for this video, but in general terms, the Democrats will see a deficit in the polling, sorry, a deficit in the actual in-person votes, the point where it could prove to Trump losing because of them for example, on November 3rd, if Trump's leading by 20,000, the Democrats will then say, we have to skew the mail-in votes in a certain extent for Biden to edge it out, and that could be a problem, which is why the People's Pundit, as well as Richard Barris, along with Barnes, have, as said before, that Trump should win over 100,000 on November 3rd so that it's a safe election, that it won't get stolen. So because of that, I do think that Trump, in a hypothetical, could win the state by 2%, but because of the voter fraud i think it'll go down to one so i do think trump's gonna barely edge it out there in pennsylvania but again looking at the several several rallies that trump does compare to biden in terms of the enthusiasm it's through the roof the base is extremely excited and again the dutch and the amish etc are trending towards trump more than before and because of that i do think that trump will win the election and this is my prediction guys um and I'll go state by state and tell you what the odds are of Trump winning them, okay? Um, 306 to 232, not accounting for faithless electors. This is vi virtually the exact same thing as 2016. And I swear to God, I did not plan it out this way, but this is basically what it says. I think Nevada, Trump has a 40% chance of winning it, or 35 I think that it would be 10% higher, but there's voter fraud and the Democrats will steal the election. They have very liberal procedures as to how to interpret how somebody signs on a ballot for mail-in. So that's bad. In terms of Colorado, I would give Trump a 10% chance of winning that. It's next to nothing. There's no reason why he would win it. Uh, New Mexico, same thing virtually. Texas is going to be 100% red. If Trump loses Texas, it's pretty much over. As you can see, you flip it and Biden wins. So, I mean, it'll be next to impossible to win without Texas. Okay, so as of right now, the Lone Star State, 
seems to be completely in Trump's hands. And yes, the Democrats will cut into the margin a little bit because of people such as Beto coming out and rallying for Biden, Obama coming out and hauling his lame ass out to the vote mobilization events. And I think immigration will cut into it a little bit, just a little bit. And there's going to be hundreds of thousands of bad ballots, voter fraud, drive through balloting, also drive through voting, all sorts of stuff. And Greg Abbott has only done a half ass job in fixing that. But I think he's only been half assed at doing it because he knows that he's going to win, that Trump's going to win. So there you go. Texas is going to go red virtually. And Florida, I would give Trump the odds of realistically 75% because the early vote deficit of the Democrats goes to show that they're really doing abysmal in the turnout. The Hispanics are turning out like crazy for Donald. In Boward County, or is it Boward, or is it Miami-Dade, will be a lot closer than people think, which means that Trump will make up the deficits in places like Hillsborough, Pinellas, other places like that. So because of the Latino spike, it'll compensate for anything that'll go down in any other place, basically, which is awesome for Donald, which goes to show that he's virtually guaranteed to win at this point, unless Biden has a huge turnout surge on November 3rd, which literally does not make sense at all. Um, Minnesota has a... I would say 35 to 40% chance of going for Trump. Um, I say this because the the blacks, the Somalian refugees, those people are really hammering on the votes. Their Project Veritas has already exposed them as frauds and trying to steal the election there, which is truly unfortunate for them, um, for us Republicans. But honestly, I just do not see the numbers there for Trump to win necessarily. And if he does, it'll be through the skin of his teeth either way. So uh, we'll see. Um, Wisconsin. Wisconsin is an important state, and I'll tell you what. Wisconsin has some good trends going on. The Kenosha numbers are looking good. Um, the black vote in the inner cities is going to not be as bad because of lower turnout and because they're going to be trending towards Trump. And because of that, I do think that Wisconsin will be in the Trump column. I think I, I give Wisconsin being red. 55 percent percent yeah 55 percent odds only 55 and not 65 because i have seen enough doing by too many people and i'm getting a little sour plus myself or you know soured on the election myself unfortunately um michigan michigan in particular i would see as a trump win i would give the odds of it being 55 to 60 percent um but we'll see Pennsylvania, I will give Trump odds of 55% because it would be 65, but then at the same time, there's voter fraud again. New Hampshire, I would give Trump odds of winning by, let's say, 35, 40%, but again, so unpredictable. The polling is garbage, as is with Nevada for the most part, too. So, I mean, it could be stolen as well. I've heard stories about people stealing the 2016 election from Kelly Ayotte and Trump in 2016, so we'll see. Virginia has a 0% chance of going for Trump at this point. The miraculous landslide is not going to happen, unfortunately, literally speaking. The 400 electoral vote landslide for Trump is not going to happen, as well as the slide for Biden will never happen either, so... That's unfortunate for Donald, but whatever. I never expected us to win it anyway since the pandemic. North Carolina probably has 70% chance of going for Trump, and I'll tell you why. Um, in terms of the black vote, that's going to be trending for Trump, which is important. Trump's not losing a beat with the whites, especially with the non-educated college whites. Sorry, the non-college educated whites, as well as the suburbs are barely moving. So, I mean, come on. And then we look at Georgia. Georgia has a 100% chance, 95% chance of not flipping, and I'll tell you why. Georgia has the suburbs trending a little bit, but those suburbs are also disproportionately black, and those blacks are voting more for Trump yet again. And also, let's keep in mind um, that um, the turnout for Republicans is going to be pretty decent um, because there's a Senate election, two of them actually. So I'm pretty sure the Georgians will be out to vote this time. And let's keep in mind that there's no way that Joe Biden's going to all of a sudden, Sleepy Joe of all people, is going to make the, the state go six points blue. Like, are you kidding me? Six points to the blue? What? To the left? Are you kidding? 
Um, so that's pretty much my prediction. Oh, yeah, Arizona, sorry. Yeah, Arizona's 100% in the bag at this point. Biden has a next to 0% chance of winning at 5%. I'll tell you why. The votes, the early votes are looking good. I think we're winning, actually, in the early votes, and obviously our enthusiasm is going to be higher. Therefore, there's no real reason why we would lose it. We are getting higher votes in terms of Mormon turnout, a consolidated Republican Party, the neocon vote being diluted in terms of the, the John McCain Democrats. They're less relevant now. Jeff Flake, stuff like that, that's less relevant now than two years ago when they were still alive and relevant in politics, perhaps. And honestly, because of these reasons, yes, maybe he'll lo lose a little bit of support from 2016, but it will not be enough for him to lose. I promise you that much, pretty much. Um, anyways, guys, Trump overall, in terms of winning the election, I would give his odds at, let me think, I'd say 60%. How about 60%? Do you think 60 is good enough? We'll see who wins. I predict Trump will win. If he doesn't, will be there will be hell. And if he does win, the left will throw a fit and cry, and I cannot wait for that day. Thank you for watching.